it's collected by my PTE tutorials. Well, of course, the fact that the hands look so similar was intentional. The scriptorium wanted a professional looking work and they didn't want a lot of individuality in the script. So, the primary objective of the originals writing in this manuscript was to make it look identical. As a matter of fact, because scribes are different people and they have different hand-eye coordination and different habits, they ended up producing something that was slightly different, which is not easy to tell to someone who hasn't been staring at the manuscript for a while. Well, of course, the fact that the hands look so similar was intentional. The scriptorium wanted a professional looking work and they didn't want a lot of individuality in the script. So, the primary objective of the originals writing in this manuscript was to make it look identical. As a matter of fact, because scribes are different people and they have different hand-eye coordination and different habits, they ended up producing something that was slightly different which is not easy to tell to someone who hasn't been staring at the manuscript for a while. It's collected by my PTE tutorials. The effect of the first difference is, on the one hand, to refine and enlarge the public views, by passing them through the medium of a chosen body of citizens, whose wisdom may best discern the true interest of their country and whose patriotism and love of justice will be least likely to sacrifice it to temporary or partial considerations. The effect of the first difference is, on the one hand, to refine and enlarge the public views, by passing them through the medium of a chosen body of citizens, whose It's collected by my PTE tutorials. Dave Hackenberg, a beekeeper since 1962, can usually tell what killed his bees just by looking at them. If they're lying on the ground in front of a hive, it's probably pesticides, he says. If the bees are deformed and wingless, it's probably vampire mites. But last fall, Hackenberg saw something he had never seen before. Thousands of his bee colonies simply disappeared. He was in Florida at the time, pulling the lids off some of his commercial hives. To his horror, they were all empty. Dave Hackenberg, a beekeeper since 1962, can usually tell what killed his bees just by looking at them. If they're lying on the ground in front of a hive, it's probably pesticides, he says. If the bees are deformed and wingless, it's probably vampire mites. But last fall, Hackenberg saw something he had never seen before. Thousands of his bee colonies simply disappeared. He was in Florida at the time, pulling the lids off some of his commercial hives. To his horror, they were all empty. It's collected by my PTE tutorials. Lawrence Stephen Lowry, the 1st of November 1887 to the 23rd of February 1976, was an English artist. Many of his drawings and paintings depict Pendleberry, Lancashire, where he lived and worked for more than 40 years, and also Salford and its surrounding areas. 
Lowry is famous for painting scenes of life in the industrial districts of northwest England in the mid-20th century. He developed a distinctive style of painting and is best known for his urban landscapes peopled with human figures often referred to as matchstick men. He painted mysterious and populated landscapes, brooding portraits and the unpublished marionette works, which were only found after his death. Lawrence Stephen Lowry, the 1st of November 1887 to the 23rd of February 1976, was an English artist. Many of his drawings and paintings depict Pendlebury, Lancashire, where he lived and worked for more than 40 years, and also Salford and its surrounding areas. Lowry is famous for painting scenes of life in the industrial districts of northwest England in the mid-20th century. He developed a distinctive style of painting and is best known for his urban landscapes peopled with human figures often referred to as matchstick men. He painted mysterious and populated landscapes, brooding portraits and the unpublished marionette works, which were only found after his death. It's collected by my PTE tutorials. This is one thing we can say about babies. Human babies compared to babies of other species is that we are entirely dependent on our carers to bring us up and for us to survive. And so it's very important for babies to get into relationships with somebody who's going to look after them well. So, biology has meant that babies and the adults are geared up to be in relationship with each other from the start. This is one thing we can say about babies. Human babies compared to babies of other species is that we are entirely dependent on our carers to bring us up and for us to survive. And so it's very important for babies to get into relationships with somebody who's going to look after them well. So, biology has meant that babies and the adults are geared up to be in relationship with each other from the start. It's collected by my PTE tutorials. This year marks the 400th anniversary of the first permanent English settlement in America. A group of Englishmen, including John Smith, who later was befriended by Pocahontas, built a fort at Jamestown, Virginia in 1607, 13 years before the Pilgrims crossed the Atlantic on the Mayflower. And for the past 14 years, Bill Kelso has been working to uncover the secrets of Jamestown. This year marks the 400th anniversary of the first permanent English settlement in America. A group of Englishmen, including John Smith, who later was befriended by Pocahontas, built a fort at Jamestown, Virginia in 1607, 13 years before the Pilgrims crossed the Atlantic on the Mayflower. And for the past 14 years, Bill Kelso has been working to uncover the secrets of Jamestown. It's collected by my PTE tutorials. Many different types of barcode scanning machines exist, but they all work on the same fundamental principles. 
They all use the intensity of light reflected from a series of black and white stripes to tell the computer what code it is to see. White stripes reflect light very well, while black stripes reflect hardly any lights at all. The barcode scanner shines light sequentially across the barcode, simultaneously detecting and recording a pattern of reflected and non-reflected light. The scanner then translates this pattern into an electrical signal that the computer can understand. All scanners must include computer software to interpret the barcode once it has been entered. This simple principle has transformed the way we are able to manipulate data and the way in which many businesses handle record keeping. Many different types of barcode scanning machines exist, but they all work on the same fundamental principles. They all use the intensity of light reflected from a series of black and white stripes to tell the computer what code it is to see. White stripes reflect light very well, while black stripes reflect hardly any lights at all. The barcode scanner shines light sequentially across the barcode, simultaneously detecting and recording a pattern of reflected and non-reflected light. The scanner then translates this pattern into an electrical signal that the computer can understand. All scanners must include computer software to interpret the barcode once it has been entered. This simple principle has transformed the way we are able to manipulate data and the way in which many businesses handle record keeping. It's collected by my PTE tutorials. Well, 3D printing started in the 1980s. At that time it used to be referred to as rapid prototyping, where companies were able to use it, for instance, to visualize the shape of the component or a component they're about to make. But then during the last 10 years the technology has evolved from the prototyping level to the manufacturing level, specifically when it started to move from plastics to metallic materials. My interest specifically is in the field of high-value additive manufacturing, meaning that we use additive manufacturing to produce components for aeroplanes or for cars. Well, 3D printing started in the 1980s. At that time it used to be referred to as rapid prototyping, where companies were able to use it, for instance, to visualize the shape of the component or a component they're about to make. But then during the last 10 years the technology has evolved from the prototyping level to the manufacturing level, specifically when it started to move from plastics to metallic materials. My interest specifically is in the field of high-value additive manufacturing, meaning that we use additive manufacturing to produce components for aeroplanes or for cars. It's collected by my PTE tutorials. The question that most people want to ask at this point is, how do we speed up the transition? If it's a good idea to have fewer people in the world, which may or may not be the case, then how might we move towards a situation in which population growth rates are reduced? How might we speed up the transition, the demographic transition that I've talked about? And I think there are probably four kinds of answers. I'm not going to suggest that all the kinds of answers, but those are the most obvious ones. The question that most people want to ask at this point is, how do we speed up the transition? If it's a good idea to have fewer people in the world, which may or may not be the case, 
then how might we move towards a situation in which population growth rates are reduced? How might we speed up the transition, the demographic transition that I've talked about? And I think there are probably four kinds of answers. I'm not going to suggest that all the kinds of answers, but those are the most obvious ones. It's collected by my PTE tutorials. Now that story has been scotched, as only part of contingency planning. But it was a symptom of the dramatic turn of events in South Australia, and it flushed out other remarks from water academics and people like Tim Flannery. Indicating that things were really much worse than had been foreshadowed, even earlier this year. So is Adelaide, let alone some whole regions of South Australia, in serious bother? Considering that the vast amount of its drinking water comes from the beleaguered Murray, something many of us outside the state may not have quite realized. Is their predicament something we have to face up to as a nation? Now that story has been scotched, as only part of contingency planning. But it was a symptom of the dramatic turn of events in South Australia, and it flushed out other remarks from water academics and people like Tim Flannery. Indicating that things were really much worse than had been foreshadowed, even earlier this year. So is Adelaide, let alone some whole regions of South Australia, in serious bother? Considering that the vast amount of its drinking water comes from the beleaguered Murray, something many of us outside the state may not have quite realized. Is their predicament something we have to face up to as a nation? It's collected by my PTE tutorials. For the first time, Japanese researchers have conducted a real-life experiment that shows how some traffic jams appear for no apparent reason. They placed 22 vehicles on a single track and asked the drivers to cruise around at a constant speed of 30 km an hour. At first, traffic moved smoothly, but soon, the distance between cars started to vary, and vehicles clumped together at one point on the track, but the jams spread backward around the track like a shockwave at a rate of about 20 km an hour. Real-life jams move backward at about the same speed. For the first time, Japanese researchers have conducted a real-life experiment that shows how some traffic jams appear for no apparent reason. They placed 22 vehicles on a single track and asked the drivers to cruise around at a constant speed of 30 km an hour. At first, traffic moved smoothly, but soon, the distance between cars started to vary, and vehicles clumped together at one point on the track, but the jams spread backward around the track like a shockwave at a rate of about 20 km an hour. Real-life jams move backward at about the same speed. It's collected by my PTE tutorials. I'm going to talk today about how to change people's behavior. That is changed intentionally on a broad scale. How to change behavior with a specific goal in mind. This is a very common objective of social scientists and policymakers seeking to ameliorate social problems for, of course human behavior is at the heart of many of our current social problems. So for example, if people would just stop driving SUVs, keeping their houses so warm, tossing recyclables into the trash and leaving lights and appliances on, we could reduce our carbon emissions significantly. If they would watch with their 30 minutes of exercise each day, we use sunscreen to buckle up and drink in moderation. 
we could improve our quality of life and at the same time reduce pressure on our health care system. I'm going to talk today about how to change people's behavior. That is changed intentionally on a broad scale. How to change behavior with a specific goal in mind. This is a very common objective of social scientists and policymakers seeking to ameliorate social problems for, of course human behavior is at the heart of many of our current social problems. So for example, if people would just stop driving SUVs, keeping their houses so warm, tossing recyclables into the trash and leaving lights and appliances on. We could reduce our carbon emissions significantly. If they would watch with their 30 minutes of exercise each day, we use sunscreen to buckle up and drink in moderation. We could improve our quality of life and at the same time reduce pressure on our health care system. It's collected by my PTE tutorials. The ocean has been getting bluer, according to a study published in the journal Nature. But that's not really good news for the planet. It means that the plants that tin the ocean green aren't doing so well. Scientists say that's because the ocean has been getting warmer. The ocean has been getting bluer, according to a study published in the journal Nature. But that's not really good news for the planet. It means that the plants that tin the ocean green aren't doing so well. Scientists say that's because the ocean has been getting warmer. It's collected by my PTE tutorials. Those of you who've never heard the term Neo-Latin, may be forgiven for thinking it's a new South American dance craze. If you're puzzled when I tell you it has something to do with the language of Romans, take heart, over the years many classes who have confessed they are not really sure what it is either. Some have assumed that they are so-called late Latin, written at the end of the Roman Empire. Others have supposed it must have something to do with the Middle Ages. Or perhaps it's that pseudo-Latin, which my five- and seven-year-old boys seem to have gleaned from the Harry Potter books. Useful for spells and curses that they zip one another with makeshift paper ash ones. No, in fact, Neo-Latin is more or less the same as the Latin that was written in the ancient world, classical Latin. So, what's so new about it? Those of you who've never heard the term Neo-Latin, may be forgiven for thinking it's a new South American dance craze. If you're puzzled when I tell you it has something to do with the language of Romans, take heart, over the years many classes who have confessed they are not really sure what it is either. Some have assumed that they are so-called late Latin, written at the end of the Roman Empire. Others have supposed it must have something to do with the Middle Ages. Or perhaps it's that pseudo-Latin, which my five- and seven-year-old boys seem to have gleaned from the Harry Potter books. Useful for spells and curses that they zip one another with makeshift paper ash ones. No, in fact, Neo-Latin is more or less the same as the Latin that was written in the ancient world, classical Latin. So, what's so new about it?
It's collected by my PTE tutorials. If you're a senior citizen, music in the background may be distracting. But for younger people, experts at multitasking, it's apparently no big deal. That's according to a study in a journal Gerontologist. Researchers recruited 103 people, half between the ages of 18 and 30, the others between 60 and 75. The volunteers then took part in memorization exercises and a drill, where they had to quickly match a photo of a face with the same face in an array of unfamiliar faces. Some participants did the exercises in silence. Others performed the tasks while listening to white noise or instrumental jazz, blues, classical and electronic music. Across age groups, the consensus was that the background sound was distracting, but only older people's performance suffered when the noise was present. For example, older folks who did the face matching with music playing remembered 10% fewer faces. The result matches up with the theory that the elderly are less able to filter out what's called distracting task irrelevant information. In this case the distracting info might have interfered with them storing the facial image in the first place, much less impeding their ability to remember it a short while later. If you're a senior citizen, music in the background may be distracting. But for younger people, experts at multitasking, it's apparently no big deal. That's according to a study in a journal Gerontologist. Researchers recruited 103 people, half between the ages of 18 and 30, the others between 60 and 75. The volunteers then took part in memorization exercises and a drill, where they had to quickly match a photo of a face with the same face in an array of unfamiliar faces. Some participants did the exercises in silence. Others performed the tasks while listening to white noise or instrumental jazz, blues, classical and electronic music. Across age groups, the consensus was that the background sound was distracting, but only older people's performance suffered when the noise was present. For example, older folks who did the face matching with music playing remembered 10% fewer faces. The result matches up with the theory that the elderly are less able to filter out what's called distracting task irrelevant information. In this case the distracting info might have interfered with them storing the facial image in the first place, much less impeding their ability to remember it a short while later. It's collected by my PTE tutorials. When one thinks about the great distances between the stars, between one galaxy and another, between one cluster of galaxies and another, it prompts the question, how big is the universe? Here we have to make a distinction between the universe and the observed universe. We see stars by the light that they send us, it takes time for the light to get here, light is fast, it travels at 300,000 kilometers per second. But the distances involved are immense, it takes four years for light to reach us from even the nearest star. As for crossing from one side of a galaxy like our Milky Way galaxy to the other, that takes 100,000 years. When one thinks about the great distances between the stars, between one galaxy and another, between one cluster of galaxies and another, it prompts the question, how big is the universe? Here we have to make a distinction between the universe and the observed universe. We see stars by the light that they send us, it takes time for the light to get here, light is fast, it travels at 300,000 kilometers per second. But the distances involved are immense, it takes four years for light to reach us from even the nearest star. 
As for crossing from one side of a galaxy like our Milky Way galaxy to the other, that takes 100,000 years.